this weekend will be a weekend of many things many things the lord will teach the lord will give the lord will do miracles in our midst and um it will be a weekend to be remembered turn your bibles with me to first corinthians chapter 12 verse 1 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 1 Ah, Sevilla um, For my part um, in this conference this weekend um, I'll try to to talk about gifts and um, God will give gifts. I can stop for a bit. Um, I'll let you know when to pick off. First Corinthians 12 verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away onto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord, and there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. Now the apostle says, um, please, you will need to do something about this sound. It's very... I used to tell my people that I'm sensitive to sound. But it was not always so. <laughs> All right. Um, the apostle says, Concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. I don't want you to be ignorant. I don't want you to be unaware. Concerning... Concerning these matters of spiritual gifts. Now, this sound is worse than it was before. So, take it back to what it was before. Then reduce the gain. Reduce the volume. It will have small sense. Hallelujah. 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 I can preach without a mic, but we have we have an online family, so it will not be good. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Okay, don't touch anything. Just leave it. You can work on it later, but we can cope this night. <laughs> All right, so the apostle says concerning spiritual gifts, I would not have you ignorant because it is possible to be ignorant of spiritual gifts, right? It is possible to exist in a state where spiritual gifts are not things that you are conversant with. It is possible to do Christianity and not be aware of the gifts that are spiritual. And um, I would need you to, I, I intend to do many things this evening i'm very ambitious this night but i have hope <laughs> so he's talking about in verse one he's talking about spiritual gifts and by spiritual gifts 
um, you can take it to mean a couple of things. You can take it to mean gifts that are mediated by the Holy Spirit or gifts that are spiritual in nature. Now, gifts that are spiritual in nature do not necessarily have to be mediated by the Holy Spirit. Because if, as we read on, you would see that the apostle talks about gifts of the Spirit, administrations of the Lord, and operations of God. All right? And hopefully we'll get into that as we go by um, in the week, in the weekend. But he says, I don't want you to be ignorant of spiritual gifts. And like I said, you can understand it in either of two ways. But what I want to do is I want to talk about gifts that are spiritual. Are you following me? I want to talk about gifts that are spiritual. The reason is because they are natural gifts. They are people who have talents. Alright? You can sing. Your ability to sing is not a spiritual gift. Your ability to sing is a natural talent. Your ability to write does not mean you are a scribe. It's not spiritual yet. It's natural. It's something that you have. It's something that you can hone. It's something that you can take courses on Coursera, you can learn, and you can be better at the thing. That's a natural gift. It's not a spiritual gift yet. It is very possible that a spiritual gift can coincide with your natural talent, but your natural talent is not a spiritual gift. Do you follow me? All right. So that if, um, if let me see who, if Bonner Boy gets born again and comes to church and comes for discipleship, we will not put him in the choir. Do you understand? Because the thing that he has is a natural talent. Alright? If it is amplified at all, <laughs> it is not amplified by the spirit. You know, now they used to, we are candidates for dragon, like he said, we are born servants. <laughs> they used to burn us. <laughs> so, but the point I'm making is, it's very possible, it's entirely possible that his destiny might be in ushering. Do you get the point? Because what he has and what has made him very popular and all of that is not a spiritual gift. It's a natural gift. It's a natural talent. All right? But it is entirely possible that the Spirit of God comes upon somebody and the person singing becomes a tool by which the Holy Spirit advances his power or advances his kingdom, advances his influence. For instance, Saul was terrorized by a demon spirit. There were demon spirits that terrorized Saul the king. And David would be called and David would sit with his harp and play the harp and the demons will check out of the king. And I've often said that Saul was a king. So you can imagine the kinds of demons that he will be hosting. You know, there, there is the hierarchy in the demonic. All right. So if the devil wants to manipulate a king, he's not going to be looking for an apprentice demon. He say, you, you know, you're just coming out of 500 level. Let's send you for IT. No, that's not the kind of demon that is going to possess a king. The kind of demon that will be mobilized to a king that sits on the throne of the most important nation in the world. It's not going to be a baby demon. When David came to do exorcism for that guy, David did not pray. He didn't lay hands on him. All he did was he took an instrument and he began to play. And by virtue of his skill and the gifting that is spiritual, spiritual things began to happen. Do you follow what I'm saying? Now, I'm, I will talk about the gifts of the spirit, but I'm talking about gifts that are spiritual because there are many categories here yeah, of gifts that are spiritual. So, David is playing a harp, a demon is living. He's playing a harp and spiritual things are happening simply because the person is playing a harp. It's the kind of thing that happens when preachers preach. When preachers preach, if the only thing that you came out with from the preaching session was information, then the preacher is not in the place he should be. Because normally, if a preacher, and I'm not saying a pastor, I'm using the word preacher very technically. Because it's not everybody that preaches that is a preacher. Yes, they are preachers. 
And I'm saying that if a preacher preaches normally, what the person should do is the person should be occasioning spiritual things. So that the thing that he's doing is something that allows spiritual things to happen. Do you follow what I'm saying? Do you follow what I'm saying? I'm trying to make a distinction between the natural and the spiritual. And I'm saying to you that there are a category of things that are spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts. They are gifts that are spiritual. And under gifts that are spiritual, you can have gifts of the spirit. Do you get the point? Do you get the point? The word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, the descending of spirits, the workings of miracles. These are gifts of the spirit, but they are gifts that are spiritual. There are other gifts that are spiritual that are not gifts of the spirit. For instance, the fivefold. All right? The fivefold are gifts. They are gifts of the son. They are not gifts of the spirit, right? But they are spiritual. They are not natural. The the fivefold is you know nowadays if if we invite you, what's your name? David. All right. So if we invite David and we put him on the flyer, we'll have to give him a title. Bad as he bad, he'll be minister. It, something must be in front of them. So bad as he bad, he'll be minister. If he ministers well and we like, we can now call him evangel. Okay. Evangelist yeah, because he plays he plays an instrument. Or we can call him pastor. If he has enough native and people can fall well, apostle, apostle. So you, because you know pastor is entry level. It's entry level role. When you have done pastor for like two and a half years, then we'll upgrade you to apostle. Especially if your church is in the evening. <laughs> if you are doing Sunday morning, you can never be apostle. Apostles, they do Thursday services in the evening, Friday in the afternoon, Sunday morning pastor pastor now i know you you can some of you can see the humor you see you don't what i'm saying is not what you think i'm saying because it is possible for people to be pastors and they move into the apostolic office all right so that's not what you think i'm saying is not what i'm saying i'm not saying if someone starts out as a pastor that's the only thing he can be in acts chapter 13 the bible says they were gathered in that place setting prophets and teachers and the spirit of the lord the holy ghost said separate unto me paul and barnabas for the work whereunto i have sent them and from that point paul became an apostle even though he was in a company of prophets and teachers before all right do, do you follow what i'm saying so i'm not saying that people cannot migrate in offices that's not what i'm talking about and we'll get hopefully We'll get into these issues. But what I am saying is that there is a way that people label, people throw, you know, we throw titles at people. We throw titles. People even take titles. And somehow, people are very happy to take the pastor title. People, if you are not very bold, you will not take apostle or prophet. If you are not very bold, but you can take the pastor. And lately, I started asking, even this pastor who who named you? I pastor, yeah, pastor. Who called you pastor? You know, because we've said, how you just be calling yourself apostle? I'm saying even pastor. Even pastor. People think it's okay because you are doing telegram channel. You just call yourself pastor. You see, by the you will actually find out that the fivefold is is actually an administrative system that Jesus sets in his body. Are you following me? People don't become pastors because they want to. The gifts of the spirit you can covet, you can desire. Alright? The gifts of the son, they are administrative offices. And because they are administrative offices, you have to be placed there. The Bible says that God has set in the church. It is a setting. They, I'm running ahead of myself. But I'm saying to you that not all gifts that are spiritual are gifts of the spirit. Okay? Alright? Do you get the point I'm making? Okay, so maybe let's do this Bible study before I preach my message. So, in 1 Corinthians 12 verse 1, 
Concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away unto this dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Spirit. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Are you following? Verse 5. There are differences of operations, of administrations, but the same Lord and there are diversities of operations but it is the same god which worketh all in all now if we have time we'll do the gifts of the spirit we'll do the operations of god but for now let's go to ephesians chapter 4 where the administrations of the lord are seen so come with me to ephesians chapter 4 i want to make a doctrinal point and then i will extrapolate it to make the point i want to make this evening Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4. There is one body and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Look at verse 7. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Now I want you to screenshot this verse in your brain. Unto every one of us is given what? Grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. What this means is everybody who is in the body of Christ is a recipient of a particular kind of grace. This grace is not a kind of grace that you ask for. This grace is a grace that has been given already. Do you remember in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16, the Bible says, Therefore let us come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in times of need. Alright? To say to you that there are certain kinds of grace that you need to find. And the context of Hebrews chapter 4 is the context of temptation. Is the context of temptation, all right? Because in the previous verse, he says we do not have a high priest that cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but in every point he was tempted like us, yet he was without sin. Therefore, let everybody come to the throne of grace boldly that you may find grace, that you may f obtain mercy and find grace. So, there are categories of grace in God that you have to find. If you don't find it, you will not see it hello if you don't look for it you will not find it you will need to when you come to that throne of grace the first thing you will do is you will obtain mercy you know what it means to obtain obtain is like purchase it's like buy all right so when you come to the throne of grace even though it's a throne of grace the thing that you will hit first is mercy you will need to secure mercy first before you can now look for grace and find grace that can help you in time of need but that's one kind of grace. There's another kind of grace that we see here in Ephesians chapter 4. And the Bible says that to everyone is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. So that everybody in the body of Christ is graced according to what? The measure of what? The gift of Christ. So, it means that the grace that I have, the grace that you have, the grace that we all have, is according to something. What is that thing? The measure of the gift of Christ. So, you see, we're talking about gifts. And I said to you that what we want to look at is the administrations of the Lord. It is the, the gifts that are directly under the purview of Jesus himself. All right? Yes. The gifts that are directly under the purview of Jesus. Jesus is the person that does the administration of those gifts. He shares those gifts. Okay? So, he says, every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. And as we go on, you will see how every one of us is given grace. Verse 8. Wherefore, he says. Now, is it possible to put verse 8 to verse 11 on the screen? Is it possible to put it? I just want to show you something, then we'll take it off. Now, if you look at verse 8, wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. 
Then you see a bracket. And then there are things in the bracket. And then he now says, and he gave some. Now, if you know English language, you would realize that it is possible to remove the bracket and read the text and it will make perfect sense. Do you understand? All right. Now, the reason why I'm making this point is because I want to skip what is in verse 9 and 10 because that's one weekend. Verse 9 and 10 is, is another weekend. So, we need to dodge it. So, go back to verse 8. Wherefore, he says, when he ascended up on high, when who ascended? When Jesus ascended, right? He led captivity captive and he gave gifts unto men. Verse 9. Verse 9. We'll run through verse 9. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? Mm -hmm. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. Verse 11. And he gave some apostles and prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. So, Verse 8 says, Wherefore he says, When he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men, and he gave some. Do you see it? Well, are you with me? I know it's like I'm turning around about, but it's not, it's not that hard. We have not reached the hard part yet. Alright? So, stay with me. He says, he has, When he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers next for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of christ till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of god unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head even christ from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies according to the effectual working in the measure of every part makes increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love now these verses are very complex they are very complex. They are very windy. And you will need to slow down to make sense of what he's saying. But look at what he's saying, basically. What he's saying is, unto every one of us is giving grace, according to the measure of the gift of Christ. All right? Every one of us has received grace. How have we received grace? The way we have received grace is that the fivefold has been given. Stay with me. The way that we have received grace is according to the measure of what the gift of christ what is the gift of christ when he ascended he led captivity captive and he gave gifts unto men the gifts that he gave to men are the fivefold all right are you here the fivefold are the gifts that he gave to men so that because everybody is expected to be connected in the body of christ there is a kind of grace that is routed from god through Jesus, through the fivefold. That kind of grace does not come to people if they are praying in their room alone. Do you get the point? This grace is given according to the measure of the gift of Christ. That's, that's how it's given. Okay? So that if you are going to partake of that grace, the only way you will partake of that grace is by is, is like indirect administration. The way you will partake of it is by the fivefold. If you are not connected to any member of the fivefold, you are going to miss out on that grace that has been given to you. But it was not given to you directly. It was given to you through... Do you get the point? So, if you are a believer and you don't have a pastor, for instance, there is nobody that you are connected to in the fivefold. You just... You have a relationship with God, not church. Amen? Yeah, you left church. You didn't leave God. Um, so, you don't do all this. But you and God, you, you people know where you used to meet. 
there are kinds of grace you will never have access to not because god has not given it but because god gave it in the fivefold now i can go further to say to you that the fivefold you see hmm, unlike gifts of the spirit like we said gifts of the spirit you can convert the gifts of the spirit you can desire the gifts of the spirit in fact you are encouraged to desire the gifts of the spirit oh you are encouraged you are encouraged for about three years in my life every week i used to pray for the gifts of the spirit i used to pray for all of them i know you people i'm a stingy person i i have issues like that so i'm like god there are nine that we saw in the verse which one do you want oh lord <laughs> oh some of you are laughing okay so let me tell you how i used to think about it how i used to think about it is that they did not say that there is a limit huh they said earnestly desire the best gifts so which one is the best gift answer me which one is the best gift love is not the best gift love is the way by which the gifts work so he says earnestly desire the best gift and yet i show you a more excellent way he did not say i show you a more excellent gift a more excellent way way all right so the way that these things work is by love all right but what is the best gift have you asked yourself that question which one is the best gift now I don't know what your answer to the question is but i found a very smart answer the best gift is the one that we need if we need word of knowledge that's the best gift tomorrow if we need word of wisdom best gift if we need the gift of healing the best gift meanwhile jesus said he that believes on me as the scripture has said if he drinks out of his belly will flow what rivers the river is in multiples are you following so I, i'm not restricted to uh, me my own is just dreaming dreaming and encouragement Th those are my dream my gifts i don't have any other one my own is just encouragement no see so i used to ask go, because a day will break that you'll be in the mission field huh? and what will be needed is word of wisdom and your prophet guy is not with you are you following me let it be oh you don't see what i'm saying let it be the case that if what god needs is word of wisdom and i am there let it be there if what he needs is working of miracles and i am there let it be there if what he needs is the descending of spirits and i am there let it be there i'm not trying to be a specialist are you following me are you following me now we'll come back to the gifts of the spirit because you will see that as you walk with god there are particular giftings of the spirit that will be more pronounced in your life they will be more pronounced in your life and in your ministry and by when i say ministry i hope you know that it's all of us i'm talking about all of us we are full-time ministers hope you know in that sense we're all, we're all doing ministry for jesus at a level hello hello aha uh -huh. so because all of us are doing ministry for jesus at a level we need equipment to do the thing do you get the point so as you walk with god in your life and in your ministry you will find out that some gifts of the spirit will be more pronounced they'll be more frequent they'll show up more frequently than others they'll be stronger than others but i have seen you see these nine gifts i have seen all of them at work in my life all all nine of them i've seen them at work the reason is because god is not he said desire hello this is do you know you know covetousness is not a good thing normally are you here you know normally covetousness is not a good thing inside this gift of the spirit matter they say that thing that we told you to throw away bring it covetousness bring it i used to tell people huh that it, when when we met those those days i used to pray for sick people they used to be healed and all of that but i 
I didn't used to see people falling under the power. I, I'd never, I, I didn't used to see those things. So I just used to see my father in the Lord doing those things. I'll see Apostle Arame doing those things. I'll be like, wow, wow. So one day I went to meet God. I said, excuse me, sir. This thing that this man is doing, has he finished? <laughs> Do you still have small juice that is to power this kind of thing? I prayed that prayer for two years. Yes. So that people will start falling. I know you think I'm kind of no problem. <laughs> no, you see, it's not about falling. It's not about falling. It's, you can receive without falling. I know. Hmm? And you can receive without falling. But me, I want people to be falling. <laughs> I, 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 I say, God, you know, if people fall, the faith of other people will rise. So it's not about me. It's about your kingdom. So <laughs> if you can help me so that I can help you, you know, those were the things I was praying about. Two years. Two years. Yes, 2015 to 2017, I was praying. And then in 2017, IEC, or 2016 IEC, I can't remember. Either 2016 or 2017. I was sitting, an apostle was ministering. I remember where I was sitting, in that old tent. I was sitting, and I was just looking at the man. You know how Elijah said, if you see me, if you see me, you will receive the thing I have. That's how I was looking. And there is a way to look. Huh? Your pastor will teach you. He knows. <laughs> he knows. There is a way to look that you can draw something that God wants to give. Huh? Even without the knowledge of the man. Yes. So I was looking. He was ministering. You see, when people... that, And a lot of times, especially in these kinds of meetings that are Holy Ghost based... People used to get distracted. If you are ministering to two people, you'll be pressing your phone. You don't know that things are flying. Things are flying. The thing the man was doing, he was not doing impartation for people. He was doing ministration. And I sat down at one corner by that side and I was praying and I was looking at the man. I was looking. My spirit was opened. And then I heard the voice of the Lord. He said, from today, you will begin to see manifestations of the spirit. That was the first installment. I left. That weekend, the weekend after that, we had a meeting. So, I was preaching in the meeting. And as I was preaching, somebody just began to vibrate under the power of God. I was just talking. Vibrate, 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 vibrate. Boom! The chair broke. I said, glory. Glory. <laughs> that, that's, that's the power. That's what we're talking. You see, I, I was overjoyed. Because I knew that it had come. I knew that it had come. Yes, that was 2016. The next year was 2017. It was in that one of those contact meetings that the Holy Ghost now said, I said, you see manifestations. Now, you begin to see demonstrations. You see, from that point, huh? Katakata is assured. Do you understand? It's assured. It's assured. It's assured. And the point is, it's not necessary. For katakata to happen so recently this year i was in church and i was preaching and then the holy ghost now said i want to do things things so i started calling the things and nobody fell then the holy ghost said i've done them close that was early this year he said i've done the things close the service so i closed the service when i now went home he now said that he wanted to find out whether i've become canal because it's very possible that you will judge what God is doing by the physical manifestations and if you do that every time you will lose are you following me okay so faith's testimony I remember after Mahanim she sent me the letter I think it was sometime I went to listen I, I was looking for the chat while she was talking she sent me the letter it was after Mahanim that the, the problem became official they put inside letter and they sent it to her so she sent me the letter that CEO, they have sent me a letter. Right? And then I remember I told her that something has changed. The reason why the intensity is so much is because God has done something. Sometimes, sometimes, it is after you cut off the head of the snake that the snake will begin to die. It, it will be so pronounced if you are carnal, you will not know that the reason why the manifestation is so much is because God has killed it. Yes. I'm speaking to you from many years of experience that I've seen. Sometimes, it is after the power of God has gone to work that the symptoms will become worse. If you do not know how to stand in faith 
and insist on what God has done, you will lose the testimony. Because what Satan was trying to do was he was trying to check whether you knew what you had gotten. Have you not wondered why is it that somebody will be a Christian and then, or he's, he's not a Christian, then he becomes a Christian and the afflictions in his father's house starts chasing after him? Why does it happen? Has he not been translated from the kingdom of darkness to light? Has he not? Is he, no, is, is he under the power of Satan? No, he's not. He's under the power of God. But Satan will come and check. Do you know what happened to you? Do you know? Then they will be flashing you with symptoms. Flashing you with dreams. And like my father in the Lord will say, if Satan could kill you, he will not show you before he kills you. Satan will come and give you a dream that you died. Then you wake up and you'll be scared. If the guy could kill you, he would have... If you want to kill somebody, will you want the person? Say, I'm about to kill you. Strengthen your defenses. I'm about to kill you. Is that what you will do? No, that's not what you will do. What you will do is you will take the person out when he's not expecting it, right? But then Satan sent you a dream. And then you became afraid. You did not realize that he actually needed your cooperation to inflict harm on you. What he needed you to do was he needed you to supply faith. Huh? Because fear is actually faith. Fear is faith in the devil's power. You know. Yes. Fear is faith in Satan's power. Faith is faith in God's power. It's faith. It's, it's belief. Trust in the ability of God. When you are afraid, what you are saying is you are actually scared of the potentials of darkness. You are saying that you believe so much that Satan can do what he will say. Therefore, all right? And that faith is what energizes him to afflict you the way he wanted to. Do you get the point I'm making? Mm. So I'm saying to you that if you follow the physical, many times you will miss it. Especially in the manifestations, the things of the spirit, you will miss it. You can pray for someone and the person doesn't fall and the person has got it. And you can pray for someone and the person falls and breaks all the chairs and the person didn't get nothing. I remember one very funny experience. I was doing devotion one morning and while I was doing devotion, the Lord came to me in my devotion and said, I've given you this thing. Very, it was a beautiful thing, which I don't want to say. But he said, I've given you this thing. This was years ago. And I received the word of the Lord. I said, thank you, Lord, for this gift that you have given me. That evening was doctrine and power. And in that doctrine and power, that evening, Apostle Arame was around. So when Apostle Arame was ministering, he now said the thing that God said he has given me. He said, I see the Lord giving somebody something. And that thing he said was what they gave me in the morning. Then three people fell. So I said, thank you, Lord. These are the signs that have received it. You don't get it. The people that fell, they are the sign that it has come to me. Now, I don't know whether they got something or not. But I know that that their manifestation was so that I know that I've received the thing because hmm, we walk by faith we don't walk by sight are you following me are you following me and in your handle of spirit things you would need to ensure that you ensure that you live in the faith realm not in the sight realm you need to ensure that you live in the faith realm you can pray for someone someone is sick you lay your hands on the person pray for the person and sometimes you will literally feel the power of God moving into the person's body sometimes you will not the reason why people will be healed when I pray for them is because Jesus said this sign shall follow them that believe that's the reason do you get the point whether the person falls or not it doesn't change anything it doesn't change anything by the way recently from like late last year I've started seeing a heightened let me say it so that you can believe for it because when we have a miracle night, there will be many of those kinds of testimonies. If you are a lady, painful period is abnormal. Hello? Yes. I was praying one morning when the Lord said it to me. And when the Lord said it to me, I received it and I believed it. And I declared it in church. Just declaration of that word. Like four ladies came to me after service, like the next week, to say to me that this thing had happened, they had always had pain, but, and from that time it has been intensifying. So I believe, I believe the word of the Lord. It's not, it's not compulsory when your period wants to start, you'll be screaming on, no. So, believe. So if you have 
that kind of experience, Jesus will remove it. Alright? Uh, so that you can be comfortable. Not that every month you want to die. What is it, Seth? <laughs> Eh? What is it? Every month you want to. And people don't have to fall for that thing to live. If you walk by faith, huh? you will know that manifestations don't need to break out before God is moving. All right? But you see, I went to the Lord and said, Sir, this thing, do you have it? And after two years, he responded. And from that point, the thing has been increasing ever since. But I have never come to the point where I put my faith in what is happening. Are you following me? Say, okay, seven people. The power of God is coming on seven people. Even if nobody falls, I know that the power of God came on seven people. Like my father in the Lord will always say, when Jesus called his disciples, the Bible says he called his disciples and gave them power. All right, and then they went out, and when they went out, they were healing and doing all of those things, and they came back and they were surprised. They said, Master, even the demons were subject to us in your name because it doesn't look like they believed it in the first place. It doesn't look like that because they, they came back with so much excitement to tell you that the encounter they had with Jesus when Jesus said, I give unto you power, was very likely not dramatic. Very likely. So when Jesus says, I want to give you power, how does Jesus give you power? It's by saying to you that I give you power. That's how he gives you power. And if you have to roll on the floor and break three chairs before you know that you have received power, you will short change yourself. And many times, many times, the statement of faith in your heart will be seen when you have left the place and there is now a situation that needs the thing that you believe that you received. So in the meeting, you said you, be, you believe that God was giving you a gift of healing. Then when you now went, your roommate now said he has this boil in his teeth. He's, he's, he's paining him. He wants to go and see the dentist. Or which drug can he take? And then you realize that just this evening, you received... That's when we will know whether you believe. Are you following me? Are you here? Maybe tomorrow I'll tell you stories because I have... I have stories and stories and stories of my experiences with the sick, ministering to the sick. I've had experiences of ministering to sick people and they die. I've had experiences of ministering to sick people and they get worse. Are you following? I've had experiences of ministering to sick people and they get better slowly. I've had experiences of ministering to sick people and they get better immediately. You are going to need to know how to handle the thing. Are you following me? Yes. If you know how to handle it, you will base your operations on faith and not on sight. Are you here? Now, this is, that was just an addition to what I was saying. But I was saying to you that with the gifts of the Spirit, you can desire them. You can go to the Lord and say, please, is this thing available? And God says, yeah, what do you need it for? Say, well, you know, I'm doing secondary school outreach, so I need word of knowledge, word of wisdom, gift of prophecy to help my ministry. And then God will process your application. And he can give it to you. Hello? Yes. I have found tomorrow, tomorrow. Because a lot of people think that the way to be imparted by men of God is to be giving them money. You know, if you sow into the anointing. I am not saying that you cannot receive if you give to a man of God. That's not what I'm saying. All right? What I am saying is that God is the ultimate custodian of anointing. The anointing is called the anointing of the Holy Spirit for a reason. It's the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who is the owner of the anointing. He is the custodian of the anointing and he puts it upon people and it is entirely possible that you will go to God and say can I have a little of this anointing and he will say you see that man go and give him 500k then he will pray for you God can do it God can tell you go and meet him and he will pray for you and God can give it to you without his consent without his knowledge without his approval because the anointing is not the anointing of the man it's the anointing of the what? 
Holy Spirit. Therefore, desire is a critical tool. Critical. Critical. But you see, for the administrations of the Son, desire is not a very necessary thing. In fact, desire is not going to be really helpful. The apostle says, if anybody desires the office of a bishop, he desires a what? Good work. Finish. He does not say anything that his desire will manifest into appointment. The reason is because the gifts of the son, as we see in Ephesians chapter 4, are not how will I put it? So, if the Holy Spirit wants to give you the gift of descending of spirits, or if he wants to give you the gift of prophecy, let me use that, right? If he wants to give you the gift of prophecy, what he can do is he will give you the gift of prophecy, right? Hello? If the Lord, the Son, wants to make a prophet, he does not give the gift of prophet. The person becomes the gift. Now, it's very obvious in this Ephesians passage because he says, when he ascended on high, he left, he led captivity captive. He gave gifts unto men and to some he gave. What did he give? He did not give gift of apostleship. He did not give gift of prophethood. He did not give gift of evangelist. Evangelist. You know what I mean? What he did was he gave the evangelist. The evangelist is the gift. Are you following me? Because are you here? Are you here? Because of that, your desire cannot bring you into that thing. The man becomes the gift. The 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 thing that Jesus gave is the gift. All right? Are you here? Hmm. The thing that Jesus gave is the gift. The man that was given is the gift that he gave. Are you following me? It's the gift that he gave. So, the fivefold, what he did was that he sent gifts into the body. The people that assumed that office, they are the gifts that Jesus sent into his body. What it means is that there are spiritual gifts that are people. Do you see my logic? Because the apostle is a spiritual gift. You see? Or let's say the pastor, for instance. The, the prophet will need a complement of gifts of the spirit. If you are going to be an effective prophet, there are gifts of the spirit you need to have in your pocket. Alright? Hello? Yes. There are gifts of the spirit you need to have in your pocket. At least, you have word of knowledge. You have word of wisdom. You have descending of spirit. You have gift of prophecy. At least. If you are going to be a competent prophet. Right? Hello? Aha. So, there are certain gifts that you will need so that you can be the gift. Or so that you can be the gift effectively. The gifts of the spirit do not necessarily mean you have become the gift. Because it's possible that you have word of knowledge, word of wisdom, descending of spirits and gift of prophecy and you are not a prophet. You are not. You can call people's numbers and everything, but you are not a prophet. The reason is because the gift that is the prophet is an administrative gift. Jesus set the gift in his body to operate, to regulate the body. Are you following me? And the regulation of that body is not by the gift that you have. It's by the gift that you are. Do you get the point? Now, you see, all of this roundabout thing that I did was to make the point that it is possible for people to be gifts. That's the point I wanted to make. Because that's what we need to pray on this night. Shortly before we came, I was praying. And then while I was praying, the Lord ignited this thing. This was not the plan, but the Lord ignited it. He said, he wants to make people gifts. Okay, so come to Isaiah chapter 42. Isaiah chapter 42. You can, you can play just softly strings and my guitar man help 
join, help me. But softly. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 6. It says, I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness and will hold your hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant. Now, I need you to stay with me because we're about to pray in a bit. He says, I, the Lord, will hold your hand and I will keep you and I will give you for a covenant of the people for a light of the Gentiles. What it means is that when God wants to send his light to the Gentiles, what he will do is he will send a man. The Bible says of Jesus that Jesus relocated and he moved into a certain place so that it might be fulfilled that which was spoken by the prophets that the people that sat in darkness they have seen a great light. You see, Jesus relocated into a place prophecy became fulfilled. He had not started ministry. He had not healed the sick. He had not opened a blind eye. But just his presence was the arrival of light so that the testimony was that the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light because a man came. He says, I the Lord, I will give you for a light to the Gentiles. You see, sometimes what you will even see in this verse is confusing because he says, I will give the man as a covenant. That if the people are saying, where is the sign that God has remembered us? God will say, look who I sent to you. You know that in the Old Testament, the prophets of old were a symbol of the mercy of God. So that in the days when it looked like God had gone quiet, it was obvious. Israel knew that God had forgotten them. Because there were no prophets. The Bible says in those days that the word of the Lord was scarce. There were no open visions. That was the context into which Samuel broke into. And I'm saying to you that when God wants to cure the darkness of the land, what he does is that he sends gifts. Mm, he sends gifts. He, he, Israel was a kind of place that the priesthood was not sufficient to bring the light of God into the territory. The, the territory was dark. It was so bad that in the priesthood classes, they were not teaching them how to hear God. Huh? Of course, Samuel heard the voice of God. He didn't know. So he had not had that class yet. It's very possible that Eli has said, there's no need for that class because we have not heard from him in 40 years. So just be cutting animals, learn how to extract the fat, but you don't need to hear God. This was the context into which God broke through. You, I, I don't have the time this evening. You know that between the Old Testament and the New Testament, there were years of silence. There were the years of the silence of God. Maybe tomorrow, I'll show you. Because the last historical book that was written in the Old Testament is actually the book of Nehemiah. That's the last historical book that was written in the Old Testament. So that if you are looking historically, after the book of Nehemiah, you have those 400 silent years and then you have the coming of Jesus. Historically. Historically. If you see the way Nehemiah ends, you will know that he was, he was looking for something. So, you remember that Ezra had come, he had done spiritual reforms in the land, right? And Nehemiah had come and he had seen... Hi, do you, wanna, do you, do you know what I'm talking about? You... Yeah, you are in church. I can't say you are lying. <laughs> but you don't know. So, go and read Ezra and go and read Nehemiah. You see what I'm talking about. Ezra had done spiritual reform. Right? Nehemiah had come and he had seen that the thing that Ezra had done had basically crumbled. Alright? So, they rebuilt. What did Ezra rebuild? What did Ezra rebuild? The temple. Right? The temple was rebuilt. What did Nehemiah rebuild? the walls okay so you see that what ezra did was spiritual right what nehemiah did was more social it was more social even though it obviously had the obvious obvious spiritual handle but it was more social there are many things to learn if the temple is not built the nation will not be built hello yes it's a principle that we have missed for long if we don't build a temple, the walls will not be built. If you try to build the walls first before you build a temple, you will end up with what happened in the book of Malachi. Huh? 
in the book of Malachi, God came to the children of Israel and said, you people, you always complain that you don't have money, you don't have money, you don't have money. Do you know why you don't have money? The reason why you don't have money is because when you were supposed to give me money, you didn't give me. How can you have? The people now said, is it not because we didn't have that we didn't give you? And I, I know you've, you've had that dilemma before. You couldn't give offering because you didn't have. Meanwhile, the real reason why you didn't have is because you didn't give. Side, I'm just leaving issues for your pastor to handle. You see, you, you, we, this giving, we will teach, we will teach giving. You know what we do is to teach giving normally. Normally. We used to do as if... I just raise... See, God will raise multi-millionaires from our midst. You don't, I know you don't believe. You see, we're telling you now because you don't look like it now. That's why we're saying it. Because if we say it, then you think we want your money. From our midst, eh? Yes. The people that we fund our work, they will be among us. They will be among us. Yes. They will be among us. From our midst. Young people. Young people that don't look like they have advantages. I, I'm seeing them. I'm seeing them. You see what I see? I see I see stars that are shooting out from the ground. I see stars that are shooting out from the ground. And I know you do not believe, but I'm saying to you, God will put resources in our hands. Yes, I don't even know how we got here, but we are here. We are here. God will put resources in our hands. Men and women of wealth will rise. The Bible says of Boaz that he was a mighty man of wealth. It is many of us will enter into that thing. Oh, this weekend God will activate many things. And even though it does not look like it yet, because God will give us everything that he needs to give us so that we can become the gift. He says, I will give you as a light for the Gentiles. You, you will be my covenant to the ends of the earth. How does a man become a covenant? How does a man become light to the Gentiles? I've showed you the doctrinal part to tell you that the fivefold is an example. That when you see your pastor, he is the gift that God sent to you. Are you following me? But I am saying to you that on another level, it is possible for all of us, every one of us, to be the gift that God gives. Because when a territory is dark, what God does is that he sends a gift. So, when Nehemiah ended and the darkness began, the darkness, the 400 years of silence where you had the other books that were written that even the Jewish theologians agree were not inspired of, of God. When you have that period, the answer to the darkness of that land was that a virgin will conceive. The Jews were anticipating the next arrival. When will God do something? When will God do something? You know what God did? A virgin got pregnant. The person that was sent was the gift because the way that God cures darkness in territories is by sending gifts and I'm saying to you that gifts in this sense are people 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 that we will not be natural people we are people that are spiritual gifts and I, I hope you get the sense I hope you get the sense I hope you get the sense I'm saying we are not natural there is something that God wants to do with us in the land there is something that our nation has not seen and we are the answer and even though it does not yet appear, give it a few days, give it a few weeks, give it a few months, give it a few years, you will begin to see things break out of you. But the reason why those things are breaking out of you is because God is working something inside you. And very soon, God will open up a territory and say, Hey, Jessica, Israel, Glory, Rwanda, Joshua, Birnin Kebi, and God will share us like that. You know why? Because you will be my covenant. You will be the light to the Gentiles. He says, I will give you. God says, me, I will give you. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is what? Giving. I'm saying to you that God gives people. God gives people. And this night, before we pray, in Joshua chapter 3, the Bible records God had come to Joshua and he said to Joshua that this day will I begin to magnify you among the children of Israel so that the same way that they feared Moses, that's the way that they will fear you. 
when they crossed the Jordan and the children of Israel saw the miracle that had happened, the Bible records that all Israel feared Joshua all the days of his life. Till Joshua died. That's in Joshua chapter 4. Till Joshua died, the people will look at him. And every time they look at him, they will see him through the eyes of one event. You don't know what it means. You see, because... Ooh. they will look at the man and every day they look at the man they will remember Jordan this man will be 80 they will look at him and they will remember Jordan because of that singular event the Bible says they feared him all the days of his life there is a day that God magnifies his own in that day it will look like one thing happened just one thing just one thing you see this is the reason why there are men of God that you cannot speak against to certain people huh? No matter what you say, they will not agree. Because there was a day when their son was dying. And the boy, life was going out of him. Then they called this man. And the man said, he is made alive. And he ended the call. That day, as soon as the call ended, life entered back into the boy. And the boy began to run. Even if you come with pictures that this man has misbehaved, they will not hear you. You know why? You know why? He has been magnified. They are negative. This thing can be used badly. But it's something that God must do for us. Are you hearing me? If God will give us as gifts, I'm telling you that this thing is compulsory. God will need to ensure that he orchestrates events. See, it will look like something easy. Huh? In the wilderness, he will be training you. You will be learning how to use word of knowledge. Four years. Five years six years seven years then all of a sudden a president will call you you remember that when when pharaoh when pharaoh was going to exalt joseph above the nation you know that was not the day that joseph started discerning dreams who until then the word of the lord tried him tried him tried him tried him this thing the, the guy had been running it since when he was small but his destiny was to stand at the head of the most powerful nation in the world and i'm saying to you that the thing that happened between pharaoh and joseph even if you come tomorrow and say joseph is not managing economy well pharaoh will remember but he explained my dream he explained my dream no matter what happens joshua will come in in joshua chapter 5 and he will tell all the men of israel you people need to circumcise yourself do you know what it means to bring an instruction that Moses did not give? Do you know who Moses was? Moses is the standard. Moses is the man that you don't want to come after. If Moses was your pastor and he dies, you don't want to be the pastor after him. This is a man that brought water out of the rock. This is a man that silenced the gods of Egypt. This man opened a sea for people to pass through. Then this boy now says he wants to come and succeed him. Then he now says, I, I know... Moses did not talk about circumcision but I want to talk about circumcision. Do you know the kind of backlash that Joshua would have received from the people? What are you talking about? This guy that we have been following for how many years? We followed him for 40 years. Our clothes did not get bigger than us. For 40 years we had food. We had meat. We had water. In the wilderness. This man. You know Moses will go into the tent of meeting and God will send a cloud. The cloud will come and stay at the door. People used to watch Moses going in to meet with God. This is the prophet that God said normally with his normal prophets. He used to gist with them by dreams and visions. But with Moses, they spoke face to face. How do you, how do you succeed that kind of man? If the man has gone to be with the Lord, how do you become the pastor in his stead? How? You know how? Is that God can magnify. And I'm saying to you, this night we will pray and we will beg God. Because before God will give us as a gift to the nations, God will occasion an event. All of a sudden, Pharaoh will have a dream. Pharaoh will have a dream. And the interpretation to that dream will be in your hand. Four years, five years, you had been testing interpretation of dreams. The thing had been working. You had been learning the handle. It had been working. But on a particular day, the king was in need of it. One day, one day, the guy will be magnified before the nation. And he becomes the gift of God. The way that Egypt was preserved was Joseph. He was the gift that was given to that nation. It's time to pray. Oh! 
the man can be the gift and i'm saying to you this night that the promise of god is i will give you i will give you i will give you as a covenant of the people i will give you as light to the gentiles i will give you tonight we want to say oh lord give me you are not saying give me something you are saying give me to something give me can you pray can you pray he will magnify but the prayer is that he will give you he will give you sabarakade vesula barase felida Renana Tesosa Simana Kado Verisa Braske Vila Sana Braca Suze Fato Libra Tele Brenaka Suze Fala Briva Dasa Sila Briva Tala The nations are waiting. Give me to the nations. There is a sphere of influence that is waiting. I'm saying that you can be the gift that God gives to entertainment. You can be the gift that he gives to academia. You can be the gift that he gives to politics. Just maybe Nigeria is waiting. And you are the gift that needs to be given. Sabarakavrenina skapra vila tale. Sebrene katoza baraseve. want to say give me give me give me to the nations give me to the people of the earth give me to spheres and and territories maybe the darkness is prevalent because a gift has not been given you can be that gift. Can you cry tonight? You can be that gift. You can be that gift. Shelene mene shale shale Shile, Shile mo, Shile mo, Shile me, Shila ni ne mo, Baraka sole brega dola brava namaka boraka tala breve. Shabraka tula braga tela brava tula breva nina. Zila braka tole vrina casco baria sele. There is a territory that is waiting for you. There are people that are waiting for you. Karo.
I see again, I see stars that are shot out from the ground. And I hear again the Lord says, A mighty man of wealth. I hear again the Lord says, A mighty man of wealth. And I say to you by the word of the Lord, There is an anointing upon this house, And men and women will enter into days of financial explosion. Hey! Yes, it will come slowly, but it will be sure. It will be sure that the Lord has ordained that out of us will come mighty men. Mighty men and women. Mighty men and women. The Lord shall bless us and the ends of the earth shall fear him. I want you to pray and enter. I want you to pray and enter. I want you to pray and enter. If you are following online, you are not left out. Sabaraka beno shahate la baradila. Shai kemo shahata. Sibaria kamano se vila se saile. Sabare kova. Savira kabane. Savara katila. Saveria Kobe, Mande Brakasala, our businesses will flourish. Our businesses will flourish. Our businesses will flourish. The works of our hands will thrive because the Lord shall bless us and the ends of the earth shall fear him. The Lord shall bless us. The ends of the earth shall fear him. The ends of the earth shall fear him. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Now I need you to hear me before I pray for you. Now I see all of the dots are connected. Because the Lord says he will give men to nations. He will give men as gifts to peoples. He will give men as gifts to territories. He will give men. He will give men. But then he also says that the Lord shall bless us and the ends of the earth shall fear him. Listen to me. Part of the things that God will give us as a tool as we expand his kingdom in our land is finance. Yes. He will give it to us. It's a tool. It's not, it's not deeper than that. It's a tool. The same way we have microphones. That's how he will give us finances. And if you have any sort of business, just lift up your hand. I want to pray for you. You do a business. You see what I see? I see hands and I see that from these hands, trees are coming out. They are shooting out of the hands. There is a flourishing that the Lord will bring us into financially. Yes. 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 And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, upon your people. Uh, upon your people. I decree days of flourishing. Yes, I decree days of flourishing. I decree days of flourishing. I decree days of flourishing. I see walls and I see that the walls are expanding. They are moving out forcefully, forcefully. And I decree in the name of Jesus for expansion over your business, over the works of your hands. Let there be expansion. Let there be expansion. Let there be expansion in the name of Jesus. I hear the Lord say that for many of you, 
you will need to reset your minds because your minds are not big enough to contain i see him saying stretch forth what i see is stretch forth stretch forth the curtains of your habitation i see lengthen your your cords strengthen your stakes because you will break forth and i need you to hear me i need you to hear me hmm. you see what i'm saying what i'm saying to you now the lord said it to you people last year about finances right last year last year because i see what i heard is once has he spoken twice have we heard the reason why i'm repeating it the reason why i stumbled into it is because he said it last year and many of you have not caught on yet you are not there yet you are not there you are still you are still at the point where you think that this your business is only on whatsapp status lengthen your cords strengthen your stakes because i speak to you by the word of the lord in seven months you will see it you will break out 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 in the name of jesus there are people i see god relocating what i see is i see a round peg but i see a square hole and i see god removing that round peg and putting into a round hole huh there are some of you that are misfitted on your jobs god will give you new jobs yes he will do a cost correction he will give you new jobs the reason is because he will give us as a gift and you need to realize that the money is not the point the money is not the point the money is not the point the point is he will give us as a gift but there are things that he will give us so that we can be the gift and so i ask in the name of jesus I ask for upgrades in your job status in your business i ask for upgrades in the name of jesus i ask for upgrades in the name of jesus i ask for upgrades in the name of jesus i ask for upgrades in the name of jesus i see a cloud that is filled with rain yes and the rain will empty upon us it will empty upon us i need you to believe the word of the lord believe the word of the lord believe the word of the lord the rain the cloud will empty upon us yes yes we're about to enter into days days where the showers will not be they, they will be more than what come the things that come will be more than the showers that you have seen we are about to enter into days where we will be drenched by the supplies of heaven yes see people will break out from there are people who are listening to me now and you're in a tight place financially you're in a tight place and what you would have thought is that god will deliver you from that tight place then he will increase you little then he will increase you little then he will increase you little but that's not what the lord said the lord said quantum leaps leaps yes you will jump over certain steps there are, there are certain steps that are natural you will jump over those steps you will jump over those steps you will jump over those steps in the name of jesus and you see as a sign that what i'm saying is true before the end of the year someone will come and testify this person is not going to be expecting a promotion now it's a sign hear it this person is not going to be expecting a promotion but the person will be promoted twice before the end of this year you will see it that testimony is a sign it's a sign it's a sign that what i'm saying to you is true what will happen is that god will make us to leap over certain things that are natural and i'm talking to you financially because that's what god is saying all right that's what the lord is saying i'm speaking to you i'm talking finances the lord will make us to jump over certain barriers yes because he wants to give you as a gift so everything that you need will be given yes money will not be the reason why we cannot get anything done are you hearing me yes money will not be the reason why anything that needs to happen for jesus will not be done
lift your hands father i ask for your people i ask let your words come hastily to pass in the name of jesus let your words come hastily to pass in the name of jesus the lord gives you as a gift to your territory yes a candle that is lit cannot be covered he sets you upon your lampstand he sets you upon your lampstand in the name of jesus you will be the light to your gentile world in the name of jesus you will be the light in your territory in the name of jesus you will be the light in your territory in the name of jesus you will be the light in your territory in the name of jesus you will be the gift that he gives to the ends of the earth 